G'day guys, welcome back to my channel. If you haven't been here before, I'm doing a German theme at the moment and I've just been given a video by one of my subbies to have a look at a German scientist comedian. I just did a video on um, Henning Fein, so if you want to have a look at that one, it's in my video feed. So anyway, let's have a look at some more German videos, German humour. As you know, most of the world thinks that German people are not funny and they're very serious all the time. I've been told by my um, subbies that you've got to understand the language and there's, it's very subtle humour. So anyway, let's have a look at this. Um, what's this guy called? Uh, Vince Ebert. So let's listen to him and check him out. Let's build it up, ladies and gentlemen. Please welcome to the stage all the way from Germany. Welcome to this event. Vince Ebert. Well, thanks a lot, thanks a lot, thanks a lot. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So, yeah, it's true. My name is Vince Ebert and I'm a German comedian. And I know what you're thinking now. German comedians are like English cooks. <laughs> or sober Scotsman and, uh, and above all I'm a German uh, a certified physicist so it's gonna be a lot of fun <laughs> because we physicists actually have a very good sense of humor first time I entered the lab of my university I saw a sign saying don't look directly into the laser beam with your remaining eye <laughs> In Germany, I've been on stage for almost 20 years to explain scientific facts with the fundamental laws of humor. And in my opinion, this is absolutely necessary because our basic scientific knowledge in Germany is simply a catastrophe. 34% of all German high school students believe that Voltaire invented the battery <laughs> or want to spend a year as an ampere in France. <laughs> Okay, some of you might say 34%, that's hard to believe, that would be more than half. <laughs> <laughs> I have to say, I'm, uh, I'm a little bit nervous because it's my first time I perform in English and uh, the funny thing is, 100 years ago, the language of science wasn't English, it was German. Back in the days, every well-educated person in the world had to learn German. And if we hadn't screwed up 80 years ago, <laughs> I could perform here at the French Festival in my own language. <laughs> and probably even in my own country, who knows? <laughs> okay, well that's clever. <laughs> no, seriously, for us Germans, the English language is very hard to learn. You have complicated words like squirrel, neural, neurologist. We Germans, we have words like Blitzkrieg, Weltschmerz, Achtung. That's simple and clear. And we physicists like it simple and clear because the basic idea, the central principle of science is very simple too. Scientific thinking is basically the testing of assumptions. That's it. For example, if you say there's beer in the fridge and I go and check, I'm behaving like a scientist. <laughs> If I say there's beer in the fridge and don't check, I'm a theologian. <laughs> if I look into the fridge, find no beer and still say there is, then I'm an esoteric. Or drunk. <laughs> but what do I do if the fridge is locked? Then I have to look for other ways of finding out. I can shake it, weigh it, x-ray it, burn it and search the ashes for beer remains. <laughs> and that's all very time consuming. That's why an esoteric can claim more nonsense in five minutes than a scientist can disprove in his lifetime. <laughs> but even if I have tried everything to find out whether there is beer in this fucking locked up fridge or not, I can never be a 100% positive. A tiny bit of doubt remains. That's why in natural sciences there is no 100% certified knowledge. It's the same in real life. A farmer comes into a turkey stable every morning to feed them. The birds think, hey, our farmer is a really cool dude. But around Thanksgiving, <laughs> they start realizing something is rotten in the stable of Denmark. <laughs> what I wanted to say, 
that the central principle of, of, of science is be skeptical of everything. And I know this is very hard because we all stick to our beliefs, don't we? Regardless of our education. In Germany, for example, uh, a lot of well-educated people believe in homeopathy. Homeopathy is a very big thing in Germany. I'm not sure if you are familiar with the basic idea. It's water. It's this delusion thing. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's good. It's like delusion and de delusion and in and water. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> the more you dilute a special substance with a solvent like water, the more you dilute something. Yeah. Dilute. Water, the more powerful the substance gets. <laughs> and this delusion goes on and on until no single molecule of the original substance is left in the water. And then the remedy is supposed to be at its strongest. That's about as plausible as throwing your car keys in the Thames in Oxford and then trying to start your Range Rover with the Thames water in London. <laughs> very good at believing bullshit. <laughs> I know what I'm talking about because I grew up in a remote village in Bavaria. I'm sure you all know Bavaria, it's like Texas without guns. <laughs> <laughs> and the name of my hometown is called Amorbach. Beautiful name, isn't it? Amor, like the Roman god of love. That's why we have 4,000 citizens sharing three family names. <laughs> <laughs> and it's also a very Catholic area, very religious people there. And I can remember when I was a child, I was forced to go to the Holy Mass every Sunday. And of course I did. Only once in my childhood I dared to cut. And three days later the Pope died. <laughs> that bothered me for years. <laughs> but I managed to get rid of my superstition because I was curious. I always wanted to know what's behind the curtain. One day I peed on an electric fence <laughs> to prove Ohm's law. <laughs> Just kidding. These are some seriously cheap gags that he's doing. I haven't found anything funny yet. In Amobach we don't have any electricity. <laughs> and uh, in this time I also got a pretty good idea of how relativity theory works, which says time passes slower or faster depending on the space. Or as Einstein put it, the length of one minute depends delicately on which side of the toilet door you are. <laughs> I always wanted to see the world outside. When I was 17, me and a few pals went to Frankfurt for the first time. And for me, it was a culture shock. We walked through a park and suddenly we noticed a mound of syringes lying on the lawn. And I thought to myself, whoa, those poor diabetics. <laughs> and then we went into a strip club. And for me, it was like a revelation. I sat in the first row, staring at the stage, and I thought to myself, do dancers on the southern hemisphere turn around the pole in the opposite direction? <laughs> yeah, kind of funny. Not really, but yeah, kind of funny. And that's why I decided to study physics. <laughs> <laughs> to make a long story short, since then I see it as a mission to tell people about the fascinating things going on in science. Because science is not about complicated equations or abstract theories. Science is about asking simple questions. Why is the sky blue? Why is the night black? Why shouldn't we eat yellow snow? <laughs> <laughs> I've never seen snow, but I know not to eat yellow snow. <laughs> a few years ago, Nobel Prize winner Eric Kandel told a very inspiring story. When as a child he would come home from school, his parents didn't ask him, what did you learn today? Instead they wanted to know, did you ask a good question today? Which is a very good question itself. If a cat always falls on, his, on her feet, and a jelly sandwich always falls on its face, what would happen? if you tie a jelly sandwich onto the back of a kitty. Yeah, so that's a very old joke. So that's 
Yeah. Okay. Cool. Murphy's Law, so you always have a buttered pizza toast and always full butter down. But what do you do if you put it on the cat? That's that's so ancient, that joke. It's all about asking questions. Once I, uh, I asked the old priest of my childhood in Amorbach, Father, what did God do before he created the world? And he looked me straight in the eye and said, he prepared hell for people who ask questions like this. <laughs> I think this is the biggest difference between religion and science. Believers constantly provide ready-made answers. Scientists constantly provide questions. Why does everybody call our priest father? Except for his own children, they call him uncle. <laughs> Good questions are subversive, creative, and uncomfortable, but the answers lead to completely new perspectives. Richard Feynman, another famous Nobel Prize winner, once said, science is a long story about learning not to fool ourselves. <laughs> Only 400 years ago, every hurricane, every disease, everything that lied beyond the normal was thought to be witchcraft. Today, modern science gives us profound explanations of phenomenons that were reason enough to burn women for hundreds of years. The biggest gift of science is teaching us how to free our minds. And by the way, this is also the, maybe the biggest issue here at the French Festival, to free our minds. So be curious, stay skeptical, ask questions. Thank you. All right, so that's a really quick one. So um, I don't know about science comedian. It wasn't very funny to me. Uh, that was more like a TED talk. Um, if you guys don't know that, you can go on YouTube and get some TED talk into you. Um, yeah, a couple of funny things here and there, a couple of old jokes. Uh, pretty much what most people stereotype German comedians be to be. Uh, too serious. Uh, too topical, you know. He could have he could have taken that. Uh, I, I did like the way that he framed the Einstein joke, but it was just a joke. Could have really went further with that, with relativity and you know, bloody multi universe or multi toiletries or something like that. Um, but yeah, all right. So anyway, guys. Yeah, like my reactions, please like and subscribe, tell other people. And if you liked uh, Vince Ebert, Ebert, whatever, make sure that you um, go on his channel too as well. So, Salada guys, and Wafidazin. Well,